welcome back to another video. If you guys are new here, please make sure to subscribe. We have waterfall content coming all season long. Today's video, I wanted to focus on the gear that I use to film these hunts and a lot of these videos in general. Um, I've invested a little bit more money this year into my filming setup because I'm now in the YouTube partnership program and I wanted to start making these videos as high quality as I possibly can. And I was a little hesitant until I could see that the numbers were really starting to grow and the channels had a lot of growth over the past year. So I wanted to talk about a few of the cameras that I purchased this year that are really going to help. Um, I still have a lot of the gear that I've been using, but I wanted to invest in some, some gear that's a little higher quality or at least helps fix some of the quirks that I have with these videos. So the first piece of equipment that I purchased... I purchased for my business to be able to film weddings and things like that with a fourth camera, but I bought this Nikon Z30 and it's geared towards content creators. If you guys are on TikTok, you've probably seen the commercials that they have for it. Um, this camera by itself is specifically for video. Um, it does shoot photos and it uses the same sensor as the Z50 that I have. But the difference is that it has this articulating screen now. So you can see from the front, the Z50 had it, but it flipped down from the bottom. And uh, the screen being off to the side helps because then you can use a tripod like this. So this Joby tripod isn't able to use a flip down screen because it interferes right here with this lip. Um, so having the screen flip out is actually pretty nice. I use a 16 to 50 kit lens that comes with these crop sensor mirrorless cameras. And it just pops out like it's a very compact lens i only use this lens for filming youtube videos the quality is pretty good um, but it's just compact i don't have to have this big lens and uh, it makes it really nice so i've got this joby tripod on here this is a movo v xv10 uh, microphone that i got on amazon and it's been really nice i think i've had it for almost three years now and uh it just gives these videos a little higher quality. This uh, dead cat right here helps with the wind noise. So when we're out on the lake or something or out here by my house, it's just windy in general. And that helps keep a lot of that noise down. But this camera also comes with stereo microphones on the top. So there's two microphones on the top that you can buy dead cats for as well. And then you don't have this, cam this microphone that sticks up. So I'm, I may consider doing that but this is also a directional mic, so I don't get a lot of like background noise when I'm talking at it. It makes it nice. I don't have to worry about the audio very much. It's just a really easy camera, and the microphone setup for it is cheap. I think they're 35 bucks. So the camera's nice. It'll help these videos uh, get a little higher quality with the B-roll and stuff than doing it on my phone which I still probably will have some phone clips just because phones are easy to set up. You know, I can pull it out of my waiter pocket and just flip right to video. But having this tripod on here, I can set it on the ground and not have to worry about like sand getting in it or anything like that. Um, so I'll have this camera out a lot more and that's gonna help with these videos, I think bring a lot more quality to them. The next thing that I purchased is a shot cam. Um, you guys see all of the YouTubers that use the shot cams, and I really like the footage the shot cams give. Uh, the, the POV style videos that I'm making, um, while obviously there's a lot of people that are doing them, um, it just gives you better footage. I mean, it's so, so hard to get this tight footage when, and I say tight as in very zoomed in, um, with a GoPro. Unfortunately, that's the best way to film these POV style videos, but having the GoPro is a wider lens and this is a 4x zoom um, or 3x zoom, but it's also slowed down four times. So if you were to put this on a 24 frame uh, time frame for editing videos, this is filmed at 100 frames. So you get 1080p, 100 frames a second out of this. And you can, this footage comes slowed down as soon as you take it out of the camera. So then you can add it right into your frame or your time timeline and uh, edit videos. So 
I like this. It's really nice having it with the sleep mode. I had a Tacticam that didn't have sleep mode and you'd have to turn it on and either leave it running the whole time or you'd have to give yourself five or 10 seconds to turn the thing on and reach down your barrel to turn it on. And it was just a whole thing. This is on sleep mode and then you just tap the stock or the side of the gun or something. And then it wakes it up within two seconds and you can start shooting. So that's really nice. This, the, the lens on this is pretty small, the receptacle of it. And uh, I think that that's, that makes it easier because it's probably the same size as a cell phone. Um, or the cell phone camera that goes on there, but it gives this a sleek look. Like you can, it's not super bulky. It doesn't weigh a whole lot. It doesn't weigh down the gun. So I think that this is going to be super helpful. You guys have already seen a few videos of me using this shot cam. I finally got it dialed in. I talked to my buddy Thomas Hoke from Hoke Outdoors, and he's been using a shot cam for years, and he was able to steer me in the right direction. And now I finally got this thing dialed in. But it's really nice that it comes with this case too. The case fits right into my camera bag. And uh, it just gives it a nice place to sit. If I take it off of the gun with this tool, then um, I can bring it inside and get all the footage off of it and then just take my camera bag with me when we leave. And I've always got it with me. So this will be a really nice addition to the videos. It already has been for the early season and dove season. So I'm excited to see it on some divers, uh, see it on some wood ducks, some geese. Uh, it's going to be... It's going to be really cool having this and being able to add that perspective to these videos, having this really tight shot, be able to see the birds as opposed to just these little dots out in the spread. So the next thing is I purchased a GoPro Hero 8. Now the Hero 8 has the HyperSmooth 2.0 and it's the same style as my Hero 5. I didn't want the front screen that the Hero 9 and Hero 10 have. Um, I just think it's gonna waste a little bit more battery. And this was, the price was right on this. I ended up buying a newer, the brand newer from Amazon, the side door here so that I can have access to the charging port because on this little monstrosity, I have the head cam, the head strap with a battery. So this is a little external battery that's on a Velcro strap, a wrap it that you can get from Amazon as well. And that attaches it to the back. And then this just comes around the side and plugs in. And then it's continuously charging. I do that when I'm fishing. I do it for hunting because this camera runs on a loop. This is on the looping uh, setting. So the recording settings you can have are the looping um, you can have just the regular style shoot, and that would just record the whole time. This records the previous five minutes from when you stop it. So when you start, it starts a five-minute timer, and then once it reaches five minutes, it starts recording over itself. So I don't have to change cards every hunt. I actually can use this card for about five or six hunts and I don't have a ton of footage that I'm keeping. So like I really only need five minutes. Uh, if I'm editing anything, it brings down my editing time drastically. I'm only looking at like the last, it puts in five one minute clips and I'm really only looking at like the last two clips, sometimes three, but generally it's that last clip or two that has the shooting or the action or whatever. And, uh, it's just really helpful. This with the hyper smooth, when I shoot, it doesn't like shake the camera on my head. Um, with the Hero 5, it did that. And I'm still going to be using this camera. It's on a clamp mount. So I can put this in a tree or on a mojo pole or something or on the dog stand and just get, a, get another view, especially if we're like layout hunting or something where I don't want my head sticking up. That is just another camera that's going to be off to the side. Give me a third camera view so we'll have the head mount the gun mount and this clamp mount and that's going to be really nice it's given a little bit more body to these videos especially when i started using two cameras last year i had a hero 4 and then this hero 5 on my head but i really didn't like the shake that i was getting out of the hero 5 when i would shoot you kind of miss what was happening this is 
really nice. It, it just keeps everything stabilized. And then you don't see this like shaking of the head when I shoot and you can see the actual shot happening. So that's going to be really nice. It has been already. I've filmed a few hunting videos. If you guys haven't seen them, check them out. But being able to utilize all these cameras and just give some more body to the videos, I think is really going to be helpful. I also am going to try to incorporate this drone a little bit more this year. It's a DJI Spark. I'll probably only use it on our private hunts. I really don't want to be showcasing a lot of the public land. Um, mostly use it for B-roll. Um, there's a lot of agriculture, you know, farming videos that I watch of them flying drones in the fields and got me thinking about field hunting and what we're doing. I can kind of showcase some of the, the decoy spreads and stuff that we do, um, show our hide, just give a little bit more uh, to the videos instead of just ground view shots. I think that people really like the drone video, the overhead stuff. And the nice thing about this Spark is it's only 249 grams. So it's under the, the FAA 250 gram rule where I have to call in to fly. And if we're just being on like on private land, it's going to be easy to get that thing out and just get a little bit of video with it and try and incorporate some of that. So that's the main camera setup for this year. So we got the Z30, we've got the Hero 8, the shot cam, and then this Hero 5 will be the, the fourth main camera that I'm using. And I'll still be using my phone. I actually have an iPhone 13 mini that I'll be using for filming stuff. It has the cinematic mode, it has portrait mode, all that stuff. So if I don't want to bring this Z30 like out in the water, I'll pick up this phone and I'll keep it in my waiter pocket, just be able to pull it out whenever I'm going to start filming some stuff. And uh, yeah, so anybody that has, I mean, even just a GoPro and an iPhone, like you could film pretty much the same thing that I'm doing. This is just giving me more options and camera angles and things like that. So I can make it more interesting for you guys. There's a lot of people that seem to enjoy these videos and I'm trying to do my best to to increase the quality, invest a little bit into these videos, and hopefully see a return out of it. So thank you guys for tuning in. If you guys like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up so that other people can see it. If you guys aren't subscribed, please make sure to do that. Check out the Too Many Hobbies podcast season two, and we'll catch you guys in the next video.